you've reached the end of the dungeon when <laughs> Big Buddy appears. This is a boss design analysis in an action platformer game. Animations, patterns, timings and player behavior. Now, Ryena is one of the five main bosses in Astra Fading Stars, thus she receives special care. She has five different abilities in phase 1, each one of them serving a different purpose and require different approaches on dodging. So, let's break them one by one. This is Ryena's most basic attack, a short ranged fast strike. It's very common to occur when the player is placed in front of her. It can be easily avoided by dashing backwards or jumping, but it requires good reaction time. Now, the average reaction is between 150 to 300 milliseconds. That means it's good practice not to drop below the high margin of 300, so that all players can enjoy the game. And this attack is fast enough to flirt with that limit. Now, oftentimes the thrust can be followed by a second attack, the slice. This move is an attempt of Ryena to reach further this time. With a slice, she covers much more range and distance while dashing. Here the player has many options in order to avoid it, by jumping and dashing above her or dashing away. But good awareness of the spacing is required. Notice that in my info panel I have this parameter here, can't change dir. This means that Ryana can change her orientation in the middle of her animation, thus striking the player even if they are behind her. That's why I'm making a more symmetrical, let's say, extreme preparation pose, so that even if she's flipped in the next frame, it won't look too weird. The slice is also a parable move. This is indicated by the glowing sensors before the attack. A successful party will leave the enemy stunned for a while or cause a specific reaction. Now, the combo of those two attacks would be the one after the other with what we may call animation cancelling, meaning that Ryena never gets to return to her idle state. It will look like this. Well, here Ryana throws some projectiles. Nothing much to say about it, except that they linger, working as environmental hazards that will make avoiding the next attacks much more difficult. One observation someone might make is that the first boss of the game has the following flow. It can be pogoed to death. One player has already done it. This is fine with me, it's the first boss of the game, so nothing to be bothered by. I might even put an achievement on it. With Ryana though, we should be more careful. Of course, she has many moves that can interrupt the player's actions, and one of them is the spear throw ability. Here she jumps really high while dragging the player. When she reaches the peak, Ryana throws the spear directly at them, at extreme speed. Now, the key here is timing. Because Ryana constantly tracks the position of the player until she throws the weapon, the player needs to time their dash correctly in order to trick the boss. Dashing too late or too early will be banished by the Divine Spear. But here comes the ultimate attack of phase 1, the Wolf Frenzy. Now, it's time for the Wolf to take the stage. Otherwise, why does it even exist, right? Here, as the wolf barks for its preparation, I'm creating a screen effect, suggesting that you are about to be hunted. Don't know if I actually keep it though. This is an ultimate attack, meaning it will deal more damage, but it stands out more and the player can prepare themselves. After lowering itself, the wolf dashes towards the position of the player, Distance doesn't matter much here, as the wolf will actually reach you, and because it lifts itself from the ground, the player needs to use double jump to pass over. But the player can also do this.
After the initial dash, it's possible but not certain that the wolf will perform a consecutive one. So congratulations, you beat the wolf and you're ready to claim your reward. But wait, there is a second phase. As I mentioned before, Rayena is one of the five main bosses and thus her second phase is special. Now, Rayena has absorbed the essence of the legendary Gary, Mayena, and thus she has similar behaviors and patterns. In case you played the Astra Fading Stars demo, you might have stumbled upon the Phantom of Mayena, which will be an optional late game boss fight. If you want to learn more about Mayena, check out the video in the description, Mayena vs Ephiel Terra. Now, in the second phase, Rayena becomes faster while her attacks cover more range. Let's break them down. This is a very similar attack to the Spear Thrust from Phase 1. Ryana does this a short distance while performing a fast attack. The difference here is that she covers more range, plus the addition of an extra energy particle flying out of her sword and attempting to fall on the player. The player can avoid this after effect either by walking away or by using their astracol to block it. Again, a similar attack to the spear slice from phase 1. Ryana launches herself while performing a flurry attack covering a good range around her. In the meantime, she throws 5 projectiles in different angles that travel all the way to the end of the screen. The trajectory of these projectiles is fixed every time, requiring the player to position themselves in advance in order to avoid the massiveness of this attack. Now, these two moves feel like an upgrade from the first two moves of phase 1, but here is when Ryana changes her behavior. Ryana spins her blade so fast that she practically becomes a spinning disc that is homing towards the player position multiple times before settling down. The player needs to perform different maneuvering actions according to the relative angle every time. They can also do this. All main bosses of the game have this kind of transformation attack when they become massive monsters and cover a big portion of the screen. What's happening here is that Ryana disappears at first, saying One might think that the fight is over, but then currents of liquefied plasma start running at the bottom of the screen when Ryana finally appears somewhere above and aims to give a hug to the player. Here needs good timing to dodge the attack, but it's not over as the continuous splashing launches multiple projectiles in the air and on the floor requiring maneuvers from the player. Gliding with Astrakal is really useful here. Here comes Ryana's most powerful attack. I like to call it butterfly for the reasons I will explain in a while. Ryana jumps high in the air, then bolts towards the player, lands herself again and positions towards the center and top of the screen. Here she takes a stance that kind of resembles a butterfly, then unleashes one slashing wave, then another. Here the player has to reposition themselves mid-air to successfully dodge both waves. Finally, Rayana lands with her swords, producing huge spikes that cover the whole arena, and so the player needs to double jump high to avoid them. This attack might seem overwhelming, but we will see if things will get tuned down in the process. I will show some footage of this fight in future videos once it's ready. So that's all about Rayana. Definitely a nasty boss as far as difficulty goes. Her first phase is ok, but her second one requires fast reactions and good spacing. However, I do keep aside a god tier section for some special optional bosses that I have in mind. Tell me, how would you rate the difficulty of Rayena? Leave your answer in the comments and thanks for watching.